Hello, this is a free call from an inmate at Anchorage Correctional Complex East. I did never want it to be my responsibility that I kicked her out. So I always let her stay with me. And then I end up being the one that called the cops. I got pulled over and I got a freaking, because I had a DWLR warrant for not finishing my community service. They took my daughter from me. She felt cold to the touch and I didn't feel a pulse. And then I want to know that that justice applies to everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's the same for me as it is for a correction officer. Death in Detox, How the System Failed Kelsey Green, a Voices of Alaska investigation. Good evening. Welcome to our Voices of Alaska special report, Death in Detox. This is a story of how the system failed Kelsey Green. She died in DOC custody in 2016 while detoxing from heroin. We want to warn you, you will see graphic images of how Kelsey spent her final days on this earth here at the Anchorage Correctional Complex. We rarely air images of this nature, but Kelsey's parents have spent years fighting the state and civil court so that you could see them. They wanted to understand what happened to their daughter and why. And now they're sharing her story with you. Before there was an addict, there was an artist, a sister, and a daughter. Who was Kelsey? <laughs> she was a wonderful little girl. Kelsey was a nut. Kelsey was very animated. She, uh, she loved animals. She loved um, music. She loved to play the guitar, she loved people. She ran into problems in her teenage years. Kathy and John Green, Kelsey's parents, say Kelsey was raped as a teen. They took her to counseling and she changed schools twice. But she eventually started using marijuana to cope. How did she start using? She was at her apartment and uh, she had some friends over and they asked her if they, she wanted to try to smoke some hash. And, she thought she was smoking hash. And um, evidently it was heroin and she liked the feeling and that's how she started. Before long, their little girl who was terrified of needles had an insatiable need to inject heroin. We tried all over the valley to get her help to get off of this stuff and there was no openings anywhere. Kelsey knew she was an addict. She knew she didn't want to be an addict. After years of failed attempts to get her help, Kathy knew she couldn't let Kelsey come home. I had put my gun underneath the couch in the living room and um, I reached down there to get it and I it felt it pulled it out and the gun was missing. So I called her dad. Kelsey had a warrant out for her arrest. She had been caught driving with a suspended license and hadn't finished her court ordered community service in that case. We thought that if she went to jail, that they could help her get off the drugs and then we could go from there. At her parents' request, Kelsey was arrested on January 5th. Her booking paperwork shows she reported her recent heroin use, but she had to request to be put on detox protocol the next day. By the 8th, Kelsey reported she was vomiting blood. She was taken to medical and given a liter of IV fluid then returned to her cell, even though she wanted to stay in medical segregation. According to DOC records, Kelsey's call button was pushed multiple times on the 9th. During a lineup, she appears barely able to stand, instead slumps against the wall. She continued to report being dehydrated and unable to stop vomiting, but she was never taken to medical that day. Instead, she is seen returning from a shower, unclothed, collapsing on her bed. Other inmates help her get back to her cell. Overnight, corrections officers again must respond to the call button. Kelsey can't stop vomiting. The supervisor decides to move her to a cell by herself, a choice the family's attorney says was a critical one. We were informed by her cellmates here that it was the fact that they kept hitting the call button saying, hey, she's dying, she's really sick. You know, she needs to go to medical. She can't stay here, you gotta go to medical. They say that's what prompted the 4 a.m. 
room change. Okay. In depositions for the family's civil suit against the state, a DOC employee admitted it is not a best practice to leave a detoxing patient alone. I would have recommended her not to move her into a cell by herself. So why is that? Because detox patients are always better with a cellmate. Okay, why? Because the other cellmate can actually watch the other person in case there's a problem and hit the, the button. If the person's having an issue and can't hit the button, you can't help them. Less than six hours after the cell change, a corrections officer making his rounds found Kelsey dead. She was found against the door underneath the call button. She had taken off her clothes at some point in time, had gotten off the bed, crawled over to the underneath the call button, was unable to reach it to call for help, and was found um, cold, stiff, her eyes open. Rigor mortis had already set in, freezing Kelsey's arms above her head. I always let her stay with me. And then I end up being the one that called the cops. So that's a hard thing to live with. After three years of civil litigation, John and Kathy reached an agreement with the state. The two are divorced, but were united in their fight for answers and accountability. It's not a settlement, but rather an offer of judgment. The state's attorneys offered to accept a judgment against the state for the maximum amount of $400,000. They were wrong. They were mean, they were cruel. My daughter suffered. I mean, it suffered. Her cause of death was dehydration, renal failure, and heart dysrhythmia. But before she left jail on a gurney, Kelsey's mom says her daughter had bigger plans. She wanted to tell high school students what addiction is really like. And what it does to you and how terrible it is. All you can think about is that next one. And then if you don't get it, then you the, the terrible pain you go through and the, uh, the, the sweating, the throwing up, the, the hurting of your bones. Uh, just everything. She wanted to let people know what it's really like. In her death, Kathy and John have become advocates, pushing for better access to detox and rehabilitation resources in Alaska. This is what can happen. That paper underneath there, that's, that says deceased, man. You know, if we don't fix that, that's, you know, that's what parents have to look forward to. It's the last picture taken of Kelsey alive. The story she might have told had she lived, we'll never know. Now it's the story of how she died that her parents hope will spark change. In a statement, the DOC said shortly after Kelsey's death, the department adopted a new detoxification order set, and there have been no in-custody deaths due to detoxing from opiates since that change. When we come back. There's proof, I pray that they do the right thing. John and Kathy won their civil case, but they're still pushing for criminal charges. Welcome back to Death in Detox. Troopers investigated Kelsey Green's death, but the Office of Special Prosecutions chose not to pursue criminal charges. Now, based on information revealed during civil litigation, her parents have once again renewed their call for justice. Every day without Kelsey is hard. I went to the store and you'd see things that she would love, and Christmas is hard. I love her. I miss her. And she was a challenge, man. She was a handful. But you know what? I would trade every one of my days for even one more bad day with her. More than three years later, Kelsey's parents are still hoping someone will be held accountable. Even though it was referred for criminal prosecution, there wasn't one. The official line from the, from the state at that time was that all the people involved were following the then existing protocols in place at the time. And so long as they were doing that, there can't be criminal liability because they were discharging the duties of their job. But Jason Scala, who represents the family, says he found multiple instances of corrections staff 
violating policies. And we're on the record at 10.05. And the proof is in their depositions for the civil case. Interviews taped under oath. Would you agree that medical followed their then existing medical protocol in their follow the detox protocol when administering medical care to Kelsey Green? I will have to say no. Okay, and why would you say no? Because the standard protocol, when you read through it, dictates that we get vital signs before each dosing of medication, and that was not done. Kelsey's chart confirms no vitals were recorded, and that's just one example. Do you believe that you complied with the video retention policy of the DOC in place at the time uh, following the death of a prisoner? Present policy, not completely. Scala says the DOC gave investigators video for the 24 hours leading up to Kelsey's death. But the policy at the time stated that's the minimum amount required and that the DOC must also turn over any other video relevant to the death. The DOC employee in charge of preserving the evidence testified days worth of other video wasn't even reviewed. How would the DOC comply with its own policy unless they reviewed the entire video? I don't, I don't know. That, Scala says, needs to change. If you're the suspect, you shouldn't have anything to do with control of the evidence they look at. The Department of Law responded to some of KTVA's questions with a statement saying in part, Based on the evidence and the law, the Office of Special Prosecutions determined that charges would not be filed and were inappropriate. In reaching this conclusion, the prosecutors reviewed all available police reports, DOC reports regarding the incident, and Ms. Green's inmate and medical records from this incarceration. They took my daughter from me. Kelsey's parents believe that decision should be revisited based on information uncovered during the civil litigation. There's proof. I pray that they do the right thing. Anybody else would have been held accountable. I want to know that that justice applies to everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's the same for me as it is for a correction officer. It's not too late, they say, for a criminal case. We've posted the full statement from the Department of Law online, as well as the statement from the Department of Corrections outlining changes they've made since Kelsey's death, neither agency chose to participate in an interview for this report. There was one more piece of video the DOC saved, though no one we've spoken with has been able to tell us why. It shows a then powerful politician visiting Kelsey in jail before her death. You can view that video as well as other evidence from the case on KTVA.com right now. This has been Death in Detox, a Voices of Alaska special report for KTVA, I'm Daniela Rivera.